I'm Jen with the Faithful Psychics. I'm here to talk about a game um, called Pope Joan. This game is actually one that, that comes from pre-Victorian times. <clears throat> so you don't need to go out and buy it. We did. We bought a copy with a cloth board that you can wash or fold up real small. It's great for travel um, at a Renaissance festival. And in fact, I think the name of the vendor was McGregor Games. So if you want to support an indie, an indie uh, uh, Renaissance Festival kind of vendor, check them out. Uh, if, however, you're looking for something that you can play with uh, all your peeps at home that is something new to you, but that you don't have to spend money on, this is actually a good option. The, the board, you can create a board of your own. You can go on our website, thefaithfulpsychics.com, go to games, and under uh, card games, we've actually created one that you can print out and use. Um, it's probably not as pretty as the McGregor Games one, but it certainly functions, and the game is fun, regardless of how pretty the board is. So, in this game, you take a deck of cards, a standard deck of poker cards, uh, remove the Eight of Diamonds. That card is not in the game. And then you shuffle the rest of the deck, and, and no jokers in the game either, um, and deal it out equally to all players plus the Widow Hand. So if, there's a, if it's a three-player game, you're dealing out four hands. If uh, anything doesn't uh, divide equally, all extra cards go into the Widow Hand. This right here is our Widow Hand. It has about two or three more cards. I forgot to pay attention. Um, and then you flip up the top card in the widow hand and that identifies Trump. Just because I said the word Trump doesn't mean this is a trick-taking game. It's not. Instead, in this game, <clears throat> everyone has a, a decent sized hand of cards and you will take whoever uh, is going first, in, in this case the person on the left of the dealer, but I'm going to go first because I'm the only person here right now. Um, we'll be playing a card, and then whoever has the next card in order up in that suit would follow with it. So I just played the Jack of Clubs, so that means whoever has the Queen of Clubs plays the next card. Guess what? That's me. Now whoever has the King of, Car King of Clubs would be playing the next card. That is not me. Let's see if either of my opponents have the King of Clubs. <clears throat> yes, this player has the King of Clubs. Kings are highs, high card, ace is low card. So since he played the King of Clubs, he gets to lead out the next card. <clears throat> and let's say he would lead out the Ace of Hearts, because there's no way you can follow with an ace. It's got to be played as a lead card then whoever has the two of hearts plays it, and so on, until somebody runs out of cards. Here's the reason we have Trump. Trump is, uh, defines who gets five, no, six of the bowls that have score point, points available. If you pay, play the king in Trump, in this case diamonds, you get this bowl. If you play the queen, or in this case if you dealt the queen to the top of the widow hand, you get the queen bowl. If you play the jack, you get the jack ball. If you happen to play from your hand the king and queen both of Trump, then you get the king bowl, the queen bowl, and the marriage bowl, which has two points in it. If you happen to play the queen and the jack in Trump, then you would actually get the jack bowl, the queen bowl, and the intrigue bowl. Also has two. If you play the ace in Trump, you get the ace bowl. This bowl is for whoever actually goes out of cards first, and this bowl is the Pope, that is whoever plays the Nine of Diamonds, because the Nine of Diamonds is Pope Joan. Remember, the Eight of Diamonds is not in the game, so you will never be able to follow. You have to play it to lead. However, let's say I did really poorly. Somebody else, let's say he went out, and I've still got all these cards in my hand, if one of them is the Pope, I get a bonus because any cards left in your hand, each one is one point that you have to pay to the winner of that round. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I would have to pay. However, if the Pope is in my hand, 
The, the church is exempt from taxes, so I wouldn't have to pay any of those nine. So that uh, helps you decide, if you have the Pope in hand, whether you actually want to lead out the Pope at some point or just keep hold of it so that you don't have to pay somebody else. There's also, um, let's say I did really, really poorly and I literally had nothing left at the end of this hand. Then there is, I get one more round where I'm dealt in for free and that's the gentleman's hand. So I have one chance to win some money back or some points back so that I can be in it, otherwise I'm eliminated. Let's say the king was not played, but everything else, and the pope wasn't played, everything else was played, then everyone antes in the same amount. So let's say, um, two, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. Let's say from three players, we need to come up with a total of eight. That means we each put in three, and there'll be one spare for filling in a bowl next time. And that way, it's um, a pretty straightforward scoring game. And that's where the gentleman's rule would come in. If I didn't have money to ante or points to ante, then um, the ante would be everybody else and I'd get my one free roll out of hand. When Eric and I play this with friends, usually as soon as somebody's eliminated, we just tally up the score and whoever has the most wins. Um, because, you know, we've usually played enough hands by then to make it interesting. Um, this is a, a classic game, like predating, you know, board game companies. Uh, and there's a reason it's still around. Um, it's just, it's, it's a light, fun game. It can handle a really wide variety of numbers of players without actually changing much of anything or anything at all. Uh, I've played this anywhere from two to seven players and it's worked fine with all of them. I think it works a little better with three than two but that's about it. Otherwise, it works fine with a wide range of numbers of players. Um, and once, let's say, a bunch of these bowls are emptied, so I should have dealt with this before. At any rate, um, it's a good solid game. It can play with any number of players. You can use whatever materials you have on hand for keeping score. Skittles, if that's what you've got. Jelly beans, if you've got them left over from Easter. Um, and a deck of cards and some way to track what the different bowls are. Uh, it's a good solid game and if you want to read the full instructions we've got those on our website along with a board you can print out on a normal eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper. Uh, happy gaming!